Hey, Brad. Hey, you. Uh, do you notice how happy and relaxed I am? Are you trying to tell me you're different from normal? Because I don't see a difference. Well, I must be doing a pretty or, good job. Are you of... leading into a joke about how you're so much happier with me not there? How could you tell? After 65 episodes, you have begin to be able to predict the, the little <laughs> lobbing pitches I am throwing out to you. Well, actually, you're throwing them back to yourself. You set it up, and I'm supposed to do the who's there of the knock-knock joke, and then you're like, Brad sucks for the punchline. I got to tell you, I've had the best two days of my life. Monday, Tuesday, three days. Holy shit, you've been gone for three days. <clears throat> oh, man, time flies, man. I thought it was only like a day or so. I'm so short I can only reach the second wall. <laughs> oh, the fourth wall is not high. It's out. It's out in front of oh. you. Yeah. But I figure I have to climb the other ones to get to the fourth one. No. It's the fourth dimension, not not the... You know, Ferris Bueller's... I can't believe I have to talk to you about this. Ferris Bueller's day off when he turns to the camera and talks and acknowledges the audience. That's breaking... I know the... what the fourth... Are you trying to make me sound stupid? You're the one that said I'm not tall enough to reach the fourth wall. Yeah. <laughs> it's called a joke. It wasn't funny because it made no sense. What do you mean? A wall is a wall. <laughs> okay, so... But you don't have... There's no wall when... You don't have to climb up to a wall. That's a floor. That's, That's what a was lo- funny. <laughs> no, it was confusing and stupid. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> Ooh, well, you got me. Okay, everybody, quiet on the set. I guess it's my turn. <laughs> Film Reverie take, I think it's 65, but we don't know. We do know. We do know. I you... asked you earlier, and you were like, I guess I don't know. Yeah, well, six, since then, that was four hours ago. <clears throat> I've looked it up. I thought you had two. Okay, everybody, quiet on the set. Do, I thought we already did 64. Is it, is it 65? It's 65. It's 65. Okay, everybody, why quiet on this. Why are we doing it again? Because you you started talking in the middle of it, so I stopped. After it. You're an idiot. Oh, my God, this is as, as annoyed as I've been in, like, three days. Okay, everybody, quiet on the set. Film Reverie. Oh. Podcast, take 65. <laughs> and, and action. Hello, Film Reverie listeners. This is Michael Beckemeyer, and I am joined, as always, with by... I'm with pointing, by? Uh, with you did by, it again. I did it again. With, uh, you're joined by, joined with. Now you got me. I don't know. Pick one. Uh, I'm joined with. Brad is joined here. Joined by? Just, just say Brad Pooch. is here. Which one is it? Is it with or joined by? Joined by. I'm joined by. I'm uh, joined with. <laughs> no, it's not. I am joined by Brad. It's not joined with. You would say I'm with Brad. Okay, let's do it right. over again. Three. <laughs> three. Two, one. <sighs> Hello, Film Reverie listeners. This is Michael Beckemeyer. And as always, I am joined by Bradley King- balding Kingston, Ewok. the balding Ewok, Ugh, unfortunately. And uh, this week we are going to go through our, uh, we're going to give some more explanation on the seven personalities or character types that we talked about uh, last week in our show where we explained uh, the different personalities you can find um, in life and in movies, uh, television, and uh, hopefully as a writing writing tool. And so uh, we are joined again by <laughs> our longtime friend, mentor, teacher, and uh, uh, list maker, Kuj Atele Kweli, also known as Kuj who actually is the guy who taught us this stuff and brought this information into our understanding uh, more than two decades ago. So um, we wanted to bring him in so we could add his uh, flair and spin to it. 
Uh, hello, Cooge. Greetings. So, uh, where do where do we want to start? We're gonna we're what we're going to do ultimately is talk about the, these those seven characters that we discussed last week, in and how they show up in movies because we feel that it it helps visualize those characters and personalities, their behavior, if you can associate it with like a definitive character from a movie or a TV show or something. But uh, Cooge also had some things he wanted to add to our conversation from last week. Yes. Yeah, well, a lot of people asked where the seven characters came from that we used. Um, turns out personality types are as old as the history of mankind. Um, in fact, the ancient Egypts and the ancient Egyptians probably were the first to um, describe it in writing. They came up with four personality types. They called temperament, um, temperaments, adjectives. And uh, then the Greeks stole it. Um, you might have read Hippocrates. Hippocrates? Yeah. The 37 BC, um, who, who put words to it. He called them sanguine, florent, melancholy, and phlegmatic. Fla- I think and it's flag- phlegmatic. Phlegmatic, that's correct. Um, and, and to skip to modern history, um, because that lasted for thousands of years, Carl Jung, uh, a contemporary of, of um, Freud, um, came up with uh, nine characters, actually. Yeah, they, they um, call them archetypes. Right. Uh, they included um, the child, the hero, the great mother the wise old man, the trickster, um, which you also call the eight, and the cosmic man. Um, now, from there, you had different different models developed by different sides. The most popular, I think, is Briggs-Meyer, or Myers-Briggs. Uh, they came up with 16 characters. Um, using some of the factors that um, Dr. Wang had done, like um, extroverted, introverted, um, etc. Um, then I looked at this about 25 years based on uh, research from ITT and several other behavioral organizations. And uh, realized that the seven character model was enough to describe mankind. Uh, The one I found the most effective was the seven character. And it really applied to movies and TV. Um, A subject I was teaching in my digital media arts program where I met Brad and Mike. Yeah, and the interesting thing I was looking the 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 is a four temperaments they called it, um, which is the phlegmatic, choleric, melancholy, and sanguine. And uh, so in our matrix, uh, phlegmatic I think we decided fits a uh, bashful uh, the best, and choleric is like our grumpy or warrior. Sanguine is uh, like our happy. Um, what? Yeah, you call it happy too. Um, and yeah, and melancholy is the uh, sneezy in the seven doors, but uh, we like melancholy better. Uh, but they were missing that model is missing um, a couple of really important um, characters, which is like the uh, the you we we would call it the. Uh, Jung, you're talking about Jung. He had the trickster, so we uh, call that the dopey or the. You like using Joker, right? Yeah. So um, whenever, just so everyone knows, um, Cooge calls the uh, what we were calling the dopey or the sagacious character. 
he calls it the Joker because uh, he feels it's easier for everyone to understand and the uh, charisma or charismatic character um, he labeled the superstar um, that was another one that was isn't on the uh, the four character model and um, Doc um, which is also pedagogue uh, but Doc seems to fit it best we like that the way that one sounds John, he had the trickster and the doc in his models, in his, in his original model. What did he call the the doc? Um, the old wise man. And that, you that love, would yeah, be, I bet, uh, I bet you, be you right? I bet you love that, Cooge. <laughs> yeah, Cooge, by the way, I, we talked about it last week, but Cooge, Cooge is a doc in our in our model, and he loves... The old wise man. I saw a little smirk on his face when he said it. In fact, that was the old wise man when I was five. <laughs> <laughs> well, so um, are we? Are we ready to talk about them in movies, or was there something else you wanted? You guys want to talk about before we get into well, the? That, I think that was the. Yeah, that's it. In, yeah. Okay, so ultimately. I, what really helped me when I first started learning these was seeing them in movies. Like when we watched Star Wars and realized that, oh, Luke Skywalker is a happy. I was able to place it. And then, again, for myself, we talked about this a little bit last week also, was just by just because somebody is called a happy or a sleepy or whatever doesn't mean that like the happy is always happy. In fact, oftentimes it means they're pretty unhappy because they're trying so hard to be happy that it's it's a struggle. Like they believe that happy is out there and it's frustrating if they can't reach it or get to it. And all of the characters have a thing like that. Um, my first reaction was when, when, when I started talking about my character was that I – well, I'm not happy all the time. Look at me. I'm, I'm miserable. I'm like struggling. I'm f f cranky, fussy, all that stuff. It doesn't necessarily mean <clears throat> that. What it means is your character is defined by, your personality is sort of defined by these little boxes that are or are not checked off. And whether they are or are not checked off in your life or your situation, that that sort of states what you're, how you're going to react to those things, not necessarily your your constant state of mind, if uh, state of being, if that makes any sense. Right. So well, the happy wants everybody to be in their mode. Now, yeah. most of the time, their mode is upbeat and cheerful. However, if a happy is feeling sad, it wants to. Whole room to build. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, they yeah. Have unity. Yeah, so there's unity. Yeah, yeah. Environmental control. Yeah. Uh, so we so, so, to start with the happy. So what bothers me about you, Brad, is that you won't just cheer up. Well, if I, <laughs> my nature is melancholy. I can't just. You can't. Yeah, I hate it when people on move in movies say or on TV like. Well, you should just be happy or, or you know, try yeah. smiling more. Yeah, try... yeah. No, because that's a fake, this inauthentic, I'm, I I can't just be fake all the time. Yeah. I'm, in fact, you know, I... In life, that's a pretty good rule. If you find somebody who's sad or depressed or anxious or anything like that, don't tell them, well, you should just smile more. That might help. It makes you feel better to smile. Because anytime you say something to someone like that in a state of duress... Uh, they think it's bullshit. Yeah. Well, you never want to tell melancholy to think positive. You're right. It's like, because I'm thinking positive all the time. It's just not translating into feelings or affecting my universe. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing, the first, uh, the first character on this chart that I'm referring to in popular movies and TVs, which, by the way, this is going to be available for a download, right, Brad? Yes. Yeah. So if you wanted to see this, you'd go to our website and look for the look for this episode and the link to do whatever you need to do to get it will be there. Yeah. 
on the post for this episode, we'll have the link to download. So, uh, in this one starts with the dopies or jokers, as Cooj likes to call them, and a couple of examples are, of dopies are Howard Stern, uh, Bilbo Baggins from The Lord of the Rings, Gollum, um, Star Trek, there's a character named Q, uh, Deep Space Nine, there's one called Lore, I'm not familiar with Star Wars, so there's that, uh, Okay, and uh, you've got my favorite character from Star Wars and one of my favorite characters just in movies ever, uh, Han Solo. Uh, uh, and is there anybody else? And also, uh, yeah, in the Star Wars universe, the Emperor. Oh, the Emperor. Cause he, um, okay. Yeah, because he hides as the, uh, the senator, and then uh, he's, the, he's the power behind the throne. That's one of the ways we can... Uh, find uh, a dopey because they always they like to hide in plain sight, um, but they don't like they don't necessarily want all the credit. Yeah. Uh, so like the emperor was running things, but running things through Darth Vader and other people, and uh, didn't want anyone to know who he really was. Right. And, and, and do, you, do you know who Harry Mudd was in Star Trek? Uh, who, I who? do not. I do not know Harry Mudd from Star Trek. Well, Harry Mudd was a traitor. A lot of jokers are traitors. He carried these three women who could translate with drugs into any man's dream, but it was fake. Um, and he was able to get the entire Star Trek mission transferred so he could deliver these women to minors. Oh, okay. By the way, is that the um, original another... Star Trek? Is that the original Star Trek or? Oh, okay. Yeah, the original. Yeah. Uh, also, Loki from the Avengers is dopey through and through. Yeah. Yes. You can't. Classic. You can't really tell where his loyalty lies because he's not going to say anything to you. He's not going to tell you. Um, so that's the why. The side is where his loyalty lies. <laughs> what? And he's a trickster. Right. So. Um, so the reason they come off as traitors a lot of times is not because they're uh, necessarily liars or untrustworthy necessarily, mostly just because they're working their own secret agenda. So they come off, they might, every, the, both sides might think he traded on them. It's just him. That's just how he does it. Um, yeah. My my favorite example of a dopey ever, and we talked about it a little bit in last week's episode, is... Kaiser Sose from The Usual Suspects. Anytime I think of a dopey in movies, it's Kaiser Sose first yeah. because it is the dopey show. It constantly he's sarcastic and he plays to that sneezy side of himself to get people to draw people in and like maybe feel sorry for him. Like yeah. um, that character in that movie with the limp and the uh, and the oh, you know, right. I'm uh, I'm bleeding, you know, I'm. I'm bleeding snot yeah. from my nose because you know from the inside of my stomach and blah blah blah, blah, blah. but all the while he's just he's not really he's just saying it he's like underestimate me underestimate me that's the yeah that is the number one telltale sign of a dopey is that they play sneezy if if they're uncomfortable or they're lying or if you know that they're not being authentic or real and they're looking like a sneezy then you they're probably a dopey. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you suspect, you must watch that movie to end. Yeah. Uh, because not only do you have to figure out what the real story was, but a lot of the real story is told to you by a joker pretending that he's a sneezy. So when you think back at what happened, a lot of what is this why it never happened? Yeah, never happened. It's a diversion, ta- diversionary tactic. Yeah. yeah. Also, just... by the way, I want to highlight that um, it, even Cooge likes to call this character the dopey or whatever, the sagacious, the Joker. Um, but the actual Joker from Batman is a dopey. He's a dopey, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if that helps you uh, picture the actual Joker from Batman. We, how just manipulative and always pl- having these elaborate schemes and for sometimes to no end other than just for his own gratification or for a yeah, joke. Yeah. 
Just yeah, jokers like to tell jokes, and they don't care if you get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're just doing it because as long as they get it, uh, it's worth it to them. <laughs> they all think they're the only one anyway. Um, and they also, uh, we haven't talked about it at all yet, but you can always tell a dopey because of their like goofy grin that they have that that like smirk it's a that sideways they have. Grin. Yeah, like yeah. if you think of the Joker, that's a crazy smile, but at the same time, it's a smile that says it knows something that you do not. An excellent example is the movie uh, Red October. Yeah. Where the ambassador from Russia is a joker. He's not telling the whole truth. The Dr. Jeffrey Pelt is a national security advisor. So he's never telling the truth. So when they have a conversation, it's hilarious. Because as a viewer, you know they're both lying to each other. And they know they're lying to each other. Uh, but they're trapped in their character. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So okay, All that's right, so... that's dopey. Uh, check out in my in my advice is check out Usual Suspects and watch that character like a hawk because that is dopey through and through. But also Han Solo, yeah. Howard Stern is a hilarious dopey. He's always he's got sarcastic and he plays up that sneezy side yeah. a lot uh, as his also, sense of humor. Also, Conan O'Brien. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Conan O'Brien. Oh, for some reason, a lot of talk show hosts. I mean, uh, David, David Letterman, Letterman. Yeah. Um, and Stephen Colbert. They're all dopey. Yeah. Or jokers, as Coos yeah. likes to say. Um, so Segacious. next, at, yeah, yeah. So next up, yeah, sagacious. So next up, we got the uh, dopey, which lie, or sagacious, whichever they lie as the sneezy or the melancholy. Um, so some of them in movies, in movies and television, are. Or Lord Brad. of the Rings, uh, Treebeard, uh, King Theoden. Oh, yeah. Gollum, 100%. Yeah. Gollum is like totally, I mean, uh, you see how weak and everything. Is, oh, and then he tries to go charming whenever he yeah. needs something or wants something. He's all, yeah. oh, he does this for you. Yes, master. But then when no one's watching, Wait, then he's you, like, oh, he's killed him. You did that pretty good, Brad. You sound pretty good. Do it again. I could do it better. I'm not even. Trying. Say my say my um, precious. Yeah, in Star Trek, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> um, McCoy, you know Bones, Doctor McCoy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, he's always uh, I'm a I'm a doctor, not a engineer or whatever. Yeah, whatever, um, he, whatever he needs to be in that moment. Yeah, yeah. C- in Star Wars, C three PO. C three PO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the he's, con- he's the whining. He's the resident warrior. He is the resident warrior. Don't go that way. You're, you'll you'll walk into the desert three dire- three three days in the wrong direction. You're gonna your your joints will freeze up or whatever it is he says in. Right. Uh, yeah. Or, or you're gonna get us all killed. Or this plan isn't gonna work. Yeah. Oh dear. Um. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Matrix, it would be Cipher, like the guy that. Uh, uh, well. Can I give away spoilers? I don't want to give away a spoiler, but ultimately he uh, give. Uh, is he, he the guy? Sort is of he raps the guy, on everybody. Is he the guy with the steak? He wants the steak. He just yeah, says, yeah. "I don't want to yeah. do. I don't want to fight this fight. I just want to enjoy the steak, yeah. even if I know it's not real." Yeah, I know this steak isn't real, but it's so good, I don't care. Yeah. And he has buyer's regret. Should I have taken the blue pill? Why shouldn't maybe I should have taken the red pill? Can I go back and take the red pill and forget about the fact that I took the blue pill? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Never, never satisfied with whatever it is that's happening in that moment. It's always something yes. to worry about. Something to. Which I is don't, me. I don't. I don't want to say complain, <laughs> but really the word is complain. You you complain a yes. lot, Brad. Yeah. 
Yes, this and every right. time you take me to the store, I have buyer's remorse, even though I'm buying food. Yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah. I shouldn't have bought that. That's the longest. That's the longest hour of my life is the hour after you go to the grocery store. Why did I get all this? Why do I need this? I didn't need look. <laughs> I spent look at too this. much money. I spent too much money. And then you start complaining about how you're complaining too much. You're like, why am I really complaining about it? It's food. I need food to live. It's like it's the negotiation that I goes on. I bet I'm in your... annoying the hell out of you complaining so much, aren't yeah. I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I really, I really shouldn't. I know it's annoying complaining about it, but the thing is, I spent so much on food, but I need the food. And it's like, oh my god, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Another classic melancholy from the Matrix. Yeah. People like insects and they smell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're sweat. Um, yeah, just humans disgust him. One of my favorite sneezes in movie history is Harry from When Harry Met Sally. Any any time I'm reading a book, I read the last page first. That way, in case I die before I finish it, I know how it ends. That's a sneezy. And I just remembered a good dope, another dopey. I know we spent a lot of time on the dopeys, but it's Bruce Willis from Die Hard. Yes. Yeah, he's another well, one. He's... In the early, in the early Die Hard movies, they... I'm talking about really Die Hard, the, the only one really worth watching, the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, however, two and three aren't too bad, but after that, it goes. But anyway, he's sarcastic. He's, you know, he he's he he's intentionally annoying people to piss them off so that they're distracted by their rage so that he can, you know, jump out the side of the building, you know, stuff like that. And he doesn't trust anyone. He doesn't trust, trust anyone. Trust no one is the, is the Joker's slash Dopey's model. Right. Because they yeah. knew if it was But that's also that... the Melancholy's model because he feels like uh, everyone's going to mess it up. Oh, He's the only know... one that sees how it's all going to fall apart. You know who we didn't mention? Fox Mulder from the X-Files. Yeah. He's a dopey. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The only anyway. one he trusts is his girlfriend, the doc. Yeah. Right. Even though he has commitment issues and has never really has made her his girlfriend, they you know they can't quite figure that out. He, but uh but listen, yeah, his motto is like to have their options open. Well he is the trust that trust no one. That's the X Files, that's the whole slogan for the show. The truth is out there and trust no one. <laughs> Yes. Oh, and I want to believe, yeah. Um, okay, so we covered dopies and sneezies. Now we're getting to the uh, sleepies, or as Cooge calls them, the, super superstars. Yeah. Uh, so the, the melancholy slash sneezies other side, who they hide as, or the personality they don that make pe- people like them, so they think is the superstar or the sleepy. Um, right, the charmers. Or you might call it the the charismatic. Yeah, the charmers. Uh, we, the... Uh, hopefully we're not confusing you by giving different labels, but uh, uh, we just want to make sure you get it. It's they're, they're the charmer, they're the charismatic uh, character or in, in the movie. Uh, yeah, they're the charming ones. The, uh, the, yeah, the, smooth, the smooth moves, like the, I must say the Sam Jacksons of the world. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, the, uh, the Captain Kirks. The Captain, <laughs> the Captain Kirks, yeah. James Bond. So from the the sleaze, sneezy, sleazies, from the sneezies or melancholies, uh, they hide and lie as sleepies or what Cooge calls superstars, who are the charmers, the charismatics, the uh, like I say uh, often is the uh, the Samuel L. Jacksons of the world, the smooth guys who you just like. I wish I could be like that guy. Um, people who just pull stuff off. And they're just smooth. They just can talk their way into and out of anything and look good while they do it. Uh, yeah, like Captain Kirk from Star Trek. Yes, yeah, Captain Kirk from Star Trek. Oddly enough, Khan as well. Yeah. 
And uh, so I'm thinking uh, uh, Jules Winfield from Pulp Fiction. Again, that's another Sam Jackson reference. Uh, basically, uh, um, George Clooney characters. We have, we have I Nick. Mean, Thor from Avengers, right? Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I sort of argue. I I think that Deadpool is actually a Joker or a trickster, but um, he tends to be a little flashy and he's very talkative. So I'm I'm okay for the argument for that he might be a sleepy, but uh, I still think he's actually. No. Did you see the second movie? Joker. Did you see the second movie? He's in sneezing yeah. half the time because his girlfriend died. He's sitting there trying to kill right. himself. He kills himself over and over and over again. Woe is me. He's a right. he's a dopey. Which, I, yeah. I won't yeah. even I won't even include Deadpool as a sleepy in this discussion. I disagree vehemently. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we've we've had conversations about that in length. Yeah, sarcastic, uh, shrewd wit. He just pulls stuff off. He just jumps off the thing and says, "Oh, I don't have any bullets." Okay, so I forgot my, I got forgot my guns. It's like, man, eh, it'll work it out. Work it out. He's smooth, but he's smooth because he's like that because he knows he's indestructible and he doesn't have to worry about it. But he's he's cocky about it. He's not just like, "Hey, watch this." He just is, yeah. Yeah, I concur. Oh, okay. I think the whole thing that he he's the only one that can break the fourth wall yeah. out of the whole Marvel universe. He's the one yeah. that knows he, he can make the jokes that no one else in the Marvel universe gets. Uh, oh yeah. He's outside of it. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he knows he, he, again, he knows the joke he's in on the joke, but he's the only one. So he's sarcastically talking to the audience about it. Yeah. Right. So, um, other sleepies, um, uh, let's uh, some female sleepies, uh, the original, Laura Croft in the uh, the original Tomb Raiders movies. Uh, what is it, Angelina Jolie? Um, she's almost she's as sleepy in any movie or a superstar as Cooge says that she's in. Mm-hmm. Um, who else? There's some a, a lot of great female superstars. What What about from X Men? Um, I was thinking. See now, see that's a discussion whether or not I think in uh, some there's two different versions of uh, what's her name, the one that can change form. Oh, Jean Grey. No, uh, Mystique. Mystique. Oh yes. Okay, Mystique in in the earlier movies uh, comes off as a sleepy, and then the other movie she's more of a uh, dopey. So it it can be argued depending on what movie Mystique is in, whether or not she's a superstar that's flashy, or a dopey that's always hiding and manipulating. I think the later, the later Mystique is the Joker, and the earlier, the first one in the first X Men movies, I believe. What do you guys think? I think in the first movie, she's the Joker. Remember, she seduces the Jew, the general. Uh, but she's not really seducing him. He thinks he's having sex with her, and she's doing her fingernails, I think. Just playing with his mind. Yeah. But when Jennifer Lawrence, uh, Lawrence. Lawrence shows up, she's not as sneaky. She's more just charming. And then she goes grumpy. Yeah. Yeah. That's the big telltale sign of a superstar. If they're really charming, and then when they get upset or uncomfortable, if they're, like, biting your head off, that's a grumpy. I mean, it's a sleepy going grumpy. Yeah. Um, Okay, so sleepies, of course, hide as grumpies, like we say. So when they're under stress or duress, somehow they are. um, They shift into the warrior mode. Um. So some grumpies in in movies and yeah, television. Yeah, that's another another word we have for grumpies is warriors. That's what Cooj likes to call them. Um, but in the old model, they're called cholerics. Yeah. 
uh, Pierce Morgan, Simon Cowell, uh, blunt to the point, and they come off almost, uh, well, sometimes they actually do come off just straightforward mean. Um, but they don't think of it as mean. They think of it as being honest. I'm doing you a favor by being honest. Uh, Worf from Star Trek. Lord of the Rings. Yeah, go ahead. Brutally honest. Brutally honest. Brutal honesty, yeah. Uh, the uh, Benedict Cumberbatch version of Khan in Star Trek. The next, Not the next generation, but Star Trek um, in the sequel. Um, mm-hmm. Princess yeah, Leia. The, the earlier, the Ricardo Montalban con. He's the he's a sleepy. Yeah. Um. So there's Princess Leia, Chewbacca, Jabba the Hutt. Don't Incre- don't forget Worf from Star Trek, man. I said him already. But, I mean, but all the Klingons are basically that's a race of grumpies warriors. or warriors. Yeah. yeah. The Hulk, uh, Black Widow. Uh, Thanos from the Avengers, Chewbacca, Jabba the Hutt Black from Widow Star from uh from Star Wars. You got Princess Leia, Chewbacca, Jabba the Hutt. Uh, Chewbacca, the, my my Chewbacca, of course, is a grumpy or a warrior in all of the the movies. But my favorite version of Chewbacca was actually in a movie that didn't do very well, and I didn't really fall in love with. But I loved Chewbacca in it was the Han Solo movie, Solo. Um, he was great. You got to see him just be, like, all-out um, warrior mode, which was fun to see, fun to watch. Yeah, it's... The warriors, they... They're like, uh, almost like melancholies, but with a high self-esteem. Because they'll tell you the brutal truth, and they do complain... But they, the thing about grumpies is, is that even if they're wrong, it, they still believe they're right, so they'll defend their wrongness. Um, mm-hmm. it, it all, almost come off like a doc where they're giving you a list, and here's all the reasons why I'm right, even though I can't back it up with any actual proof. But I yeah. feel I'm right, and therefore, you know, they're very passionate. Yeah. Um, the Hulk, uh, of course, that makes perfect sense. Hulk. If you just want to. It's the ultimate grumpy. Yeah. yeah. That's Puny. a definitive grumpy. Puny god. Yeah. 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 Uh, Thanos, of course, uh, he's a righteous uh, warrior. Uh, righteous villain, yeah. Righteous villain. Going to destroy half the universe or uh, kill half the universe to save the universe. Yeah. 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 I got to hurt you to heal you. <laughs> yeah. Um, from X Men, you got Wolverine. Uh, uh, Definitely. What's, what's his name? Who's what's his name? Apocalypse? Wolverine. Wolverine. What's his name? Oh, Logan. Logan. Yeah, Logan from you know, X Men. He's he's uh definitely grumpy. Uh, f- fun to watch. In fact, he's a pretty definitive grumpy. He's he's if you want yes. to yeah he he's a no nonsense. Uh, yeah, he's you could say if you want to picture yeah. a grumpy. Go to Wolverine because that right. that's gonna and, make perfect sense. Interesting enough, um, Hulk is is a great uh, transition into the the next um, character because um, Grumpy's go dark. That's whenever they're um, off center or they're lying or you know whenever they're not completely off authentic, um, they hide as docs. Um, and it's perfect because Bruce Banner is a doc, um, but he but is grumpy. So uh, grumpies go doc. So that might be an easy way for you to remember that grumpies go doc, so that you can figure out are they a doc or what are they. It's interesting, um, isn't it? Because no, what well, because how the Hulk works is you have Bruce Banner, who turns into the Hulk, but the dominant character is a grumpy who hides as a doc, who is yeah who is uh, and you saw that in the last avengers movie when he got scared he was doc the whole time he was scared but he's always grumpy when he's confident yeah 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 and he couldn't get the grumpy to come out right to come out to play um so docs uh uh, my uh, yoda always constantly teaching uh, 
Hold, hold on, Cooge. Cooge is the doc. Yeah, we should like Cooge, yeah. Doc, State Cooge. your case. State your case, Cooge. <laughs> the main character of a doc is not only uh, an interesting character, but a plot device. Uh, the doc helps you to understand the theory of what the crime or the rescue or the puzzles they're trying to solve or the principles of becoming a, a master, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got uh, Gandalf, Sherlock Holmes, of course, uh, Spock. They all all logic. They they can come off as very cold because they're all logic, no emotion. It only makes sense that this be what happens. Um, but they will logic it all the way to the end, um, yeah. whether it's uh, comfortable for people or not. Yeah, Data and John Luke, Captain John Luke Picard from yeah. Star Trek. Yeah. Um, Star Wars, you've got uh, Yoda and Obi Wan Kenobi. Yes. Always teaching. Yes. Like every word out of their mouth is teaching. Yeah. Yes. Do or do not. There is no try. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Morpheus from the Matrix. Yeah. yeah oh yeah, my yeah. God. Yeah. Ultimate Doc. It's funny that uh, in uh, the X Men, both of the arch villains are both Docs. You got Professor X and Magneto, and they're both trying to right. teach their own teach their own myth not mythology uh, their own their own uh, world view like their own version of log logic and the thing is they're both right what's so great about that dynamic between the two of them is they're both exactly right yeah that's um, where the tension and, comes uh, from a female doc just so we don't want to leave the women out um, mm -hmm. Ellen Ripley from Aliens oh yeah 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 not the fourth one but the ones before that yeah <laughs> uh, you know Jodie Foster probably one of the Persons that result in a lot of women becoming docs because you didn't have doc scientists, doctors before her. Or if you did, they were actually babes, like in 007. Yeah. With, uh, Denise Richards. She's not a doc. Uh, <laughs> what, about, what about yeah. um, Jodie Foster in Silence of the Lambs? Is that a doc character? Yes. Doc. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Um. Not. Not. Uh, you know the f the first time I ever really heard this word where it really made sense is Cooge when you described how people how people saw you in your youth as sort of like an egghead, and uh, uh, which I had never really got. That was a term from before my time, so I never really like thought about its meaning, but. I don't even really know what egghead means, but I have a picture of it. <laughs> it's you, but <laughs> not not really, not really. But but <laughs> that's not an insult. No. So describe what yeah, you mean by I mean, egghead, because that does describe a well, doc pretty good. I just want to throw in real quick, Cooj. I mean, before we do any of these shows, he will spend a day or two uh, researching everything and backing everything up and making sure he, he's yeah. got all the facts. Yeah, you mean so a day or two. You you mean a day or two plus twenty something years, yeah, or however old right. he is, like yeah. Yeah, twenty five years. <laughs> just working with this captain, man. Yeah. Uh, which I now call the paper smart matrix. Um, but also, uh, let me describe the movie Red October. Oh yeah. Because yeah, yeah. that movie is written by a duck. half the carrot. Or half the characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, half the characters. Like Captain Raimi is the head of Red October. Is a doc. Jack Ryan, the uh, special agent, is a doc. Commander, I mean Commander Mancuso, the um, captain of uh, the commander of the Dallas submarine, is a doc. Uh, Vice Admiral James Geard. The uh, like head of the CIA, and um, well, he's a doc. He's um, Jack Ryan's boss. Uh, Skip Tyler, 
is the doc they go to to figure out that what they're looking for is a silent submarine. Um, let me see. Dr. Joshua Painter. He's the head of the aircraft carrier that Jeff uh, lands on. And uh, he explains to the grumpy uh, captain of that to give, to give uh, Jack, Jack, not Jeff, some respect. And of course, even the sonar guy who thinks that his sonar system is his own personal sound system is a doc. And he figures out yeah. how to find Red October. It's just a dark movie full of dots. If you want to right. see so as, a dark movie, it, so, that's it. Right so as far as Cooge is concerned, the best movie ever made. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one of them. And that's why it's better than Crimson Tide, yeah. which has like one dock on it. Washington. Well, just because they're in a submarine doesn't mean it has to be filled with docks, you know. You can get a sleepy in there every now and then, too. Well, the author uh, of Red October, uh, by the way, there is a sleepy in there, the head of the uh, Russian submarine that tries to kill the uh, uh, submarine. Um, he was so advanced in his research on the reality of submarine warfare that he needs docs every place to help explain the plot and how the submarines operate and what the strategies are <laughs> and uh, the technical uh, um, strategy it would slow down the movie to have it narrated so he puts docs every place to help you out yeah, yeah, because that's for the civilians. Yeah, because they're they're already explaining shit all the time anyway. Let's just drop a couple of them in there. <laughs> by the um, by the way, I just need to throw in, um, just from a couple of other movies, some recent movies like Black Panther. Uh, Black Panther himself, King King T'Chaka, is a doc. I mean, you can see how smart he is, um, and uh, how he's always. Um, He's about respect and how he holds himself, and almost he almost talks down to everyone. Just well, then, <laughs> let me explain that. The father, who is Black Panther, is a, I think he's a happy. But, the father, uh, yes, the I, I agree. Black Panther, the new Black Panther is a warrior. Um, yeah, he's a he's a warrior, not a doc. Yeah. Well, you have. I think he's a doc. Well, it's his sister who's always teaching. The doc. sister scientist. His sister is a doc. Yeah, and he's a uh, you know. Yeah. The, yeah, the one inventing everything. Yeah, and explaining it. He's the one that they say um, don't freeze. You know, and he's trying to play warrior, and, and mostly he does warrior. I'll, I'll change that if uh, I had it wrong. I just deleted it. Okay. Okay, um, so uh, okay. docs, as we have discussed, they always hide as uh, dopies or jokers, uh, sagacious characters. We've already talked about them. Um, so the, hey, Just real quick. Basically, when, when the doc is playing dumb or says, I don't know, you know that that's a sign. Yeah. If you're not sure that someone's a doc, but then you hear them, you know, that they're get, you hear the resume and here's all the facts and the documents, and then that you see them playing dumb, then you're like, okay, yeah, that's a doc. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the other two characters that are. Captain is do that on the uh, submarine when he fakes a radiation um, exposure and pretends he doesn't know what the implication are. Yeah. And for the next for the next one we don't really have a good transition but we're just uh mostly because we have a closed loop here um but the next two characters are basically each other's opposite. Right. right? Happy and, happy and bashful. So that the two characters that are left are happy and bashful. Happy's in uh TV are somebody like Heidi Klum or Jerry Springer. 
Howie Mandel is a happy and Brad we added one the other day uh Jimmy Fallon is like ha- super happy oh super happy yeah super happy um in Lord of the Rings you have Aragorn um Samwise Gamgee uh Galadriel I can't remember that character but in uh Star Trek you got Scotty she can't do it captain and then he does it anyway um I'm giving her all she's got yeah. yeah he's just there he just wants to be a part of it all but he's like he's stressed out most of the time because these people are pulling off some crazy stuff that's messing with his environment and of course you got luke skywalker from star wars another super happy um uh from the avengers yeah cooch i would say that he's a happy in real life on star wars. i saw him doing an interview and, and they asked him, when things go wrong, they keep sending Spock down to help. He says, yeah, I wonder why they do that. <laughs> it's my job to make the ship work. Why are they sending me a doc? <laughs> you know, I know more about that ship than the doc. I can, I can feel the ship. I am the ship. So yeah. in Avengers, you got Captain America. Avengers. You got Captain Sergeant. America. Yeah. Okay. Captain America. Well, go Pep- ahead. Pepper Pops, Pots, uh, War Machine. Who's Who's War Machine in the Avengers? From Iron Man. Oh. The okay. the gray uh, the gray Iron Man. The gray yeah, Iron. Man. Gray by the black character. I didn't want to say it. I let Cooch do it. <laughs> he's the one that actually works for the military. It's oh. the black and, guy. Uh, oh, he's. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when the um, Iron Man gets drunk and crazy, he goes takes that piece, and then they add all that the special weapons to the war machine. Okay. Yeah, usually the happy is usually the one that's always trying to take control of everything, trying to make everyone happy. Um, yeah, you know, making, tank from the Matrix and the Oracle, controlling the vi- environment so everybody's comfortable and set. You know, but that stresses them out. Yeah, yeah. Um, you got uh from the Matrix, like By you just way, said, Brad. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say it. It says Storm on here, but Storm is not a happy now. Storm from the original X-Men movies, the way it was cast, because Halle Berry is a happy. Yes, Storm in that, those movies is a happy, but the actual character in the comics and the animations is a doc. Storm is very elegant and, uh, you know, she's like the queen of the skies, you know. She's uh, very eloquent in her speech and all that, but the Storm, when you have Halle Berry playing Storm, then you get... Uh, happy, which is not correct. Yeah, so switch that over. The audience will only see a storm as a doubt. Um, but that's one of the factors in making a movie. They often decide to change the char- character when moving from uh, comics to movies or television. Yeah. Depending on the star they can get. The same thing happens with Batman. Um, in the cartoon, he is no question or comic book. He is a doc. Yeah, in the all animations. Type of, all type of toys and, and the figure things out. But in the movies, a lot of times they make him a melancholy, brooding and being upset about the assassination of his parents and that being a driving for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Batman uh, will drop you off a building. Yes. The bat. Yeah, the bat will drop you off a building. Yeah. Here's the thing. Batman's got, you know, rules. He's Batman is like, here are the rules. If you don't follow the rules, you here's the, you get the punishment. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Um, Enforcer. Yeah. Other other happies right. in in movies are like Forrest Gump is a straightforward happy. He's like that's happy. You got uh George Bailey 
from It's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful you, Life. You got Sally from When Harry Met Sally. She's a happy. The um um, uh, uh, my best friend's wedding. Julia Roberts is a happy. Those uh, Sandra Bullock in While You Were Sleeping. That's a happy. They are they are they are very often in rom coms because they believe in love and they just are searching for the love and it's America's sweetheart character. Um, uh, those are three of my favorite right there. When Harry Met Sally, My Best Friend's Wedding, and um, what's the other one I just mentioned? I can't think Don't of know. it. Um, oh, While You Were Sleeping, While You Were Sleeping are three s- solid movies with solid happy female characters happy female also pretty woman pretty there's woman some, there's something called a character act and actor and some uh, of uh, our actors just play that cat um let's see Julia Roberts is one of them um now J-Law and play a different characters. That's really acting. Yeah, well, Julia um, Julia Roberts. Uh, the reason she stopped working as much as she did is is because she did get tired of playing the same thing. So, like, if you if you've seen her in Homecoming, she plays a happier. She plays a happy again, but she plays a uh, um a troubled happy, not a hopeful. Believe in. Uh, the kindness of others happy as she's struggling. Uh, the other happy I was trying to think of in movies is Annie Hall. That's the one I was trying to think of. Yes. Annie Hall is a happy. She comes off maybe as a little flighty, uh, silly, goofy, but, uh, um, you know, salt of the earth type person. Okay, so happies, of course, hide as bashfuls, and bashfuls, of course, hide as happies when they are stressed or under pressure. You know. Yeah, you got uh, Bilbo. Not, no, not Fordo Baggins. It's Frodo. <laughs> I think Bilbo and Frodo are both happies. Yes. Um. Are we are we on bashfuls? I'm yeah, sorry, we're, we're on, on bashfuls. We're, we're on bashfuls. Okay, yeah, Sulu, Frodo's bashful. Sulu's a bashful. Um, La Forge on Star. Star Trek, Trek Next Generation. Yeah. 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 R2, R2-D2. Um, R2-D2, a bashful, plays against the melancholy. Yeah. Um, CPO. C-3PO. C-3PO, who you'll and very... also bashfuls in the Avengers is Phil Coulson, Falcon, and Spider-Man. Yeah, he's a bashful. Although, he and... plays he plays happy... In real, like, when he's Peter Parker, he's bashful. But when he's Spider-Man, which is, you know, he puts his mask on, he ho- he hides as Spider-Man, basically. Uh, then he's all happy, saying, doing these quips and acting like, you know, let's all get along. Mm-hmm. So I always thought that Spider-Man was a happy who is stuck in bashful, bashful. When, he's, when he's Peter Parker, yeah. Because he doesn't have his yeah, self-confidence Basically, yet. I mean... I think he fits into both because Peter Parker's bashful, Spider Man's happy. That's just how it is. Yeah, we should probably put it that way. Where it says Spider Man, put Peter Parker. Parker. And then when it's when he's happy, Spider Man. Yeah. Yeah. So, Cooge, I have, I have a question for you. Brad and I were talking recently about uh, Indiana Jones, Dr. Jones. What character do you think he is? Uh, he's a Joker. Indiana uh, Jones, you think, yeah, is a Joker? Yeah, the reason you know he's a joke, he grabs a horse, chases a caravan of, um, of villains several mm-hmm. times in several movies, and he makes up the plan as he goes. Yeah. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't know what he's going to do with that. He just knows that he's when he gets there. Yeah, I, I I can go with that. For some reason, I drew. I I started thinking something. I mean, for twenty years, Indiana Jones has always been a dopey, but or a, a Joker. But uh, I, um, for some reason, one day just started thinking: Is he 
a bashful. He's not bashful. He's not. And then Brad and I were talking about it, and we 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 decided we were going to ask you. So, yeah, you're right. He's yeah. no, because when Marion, he, when he thinks Marion is die dies, he goes straight to straight straight to Sneezy, and he's all right. depressed. He starts drinking. You know. Yeah. 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 I I, I first thought he was a doc. But then I realized he, he, he never made plans. Yeah, he never he never teaches. I mean, he's a teacher, but he never tries to lecture his villains. Right. And and he and he and he's not logic. He's not based in logic at all, really. Right. You right. know, the the third the third um, Indiana Jones movie where Sean Connery plays his father. His father is a doc, and that's how you can really tell that yes. Indiana yeah. Jones isn't a doc. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, his yeah. father is. His father did all the research and the documentation. Yeah. And... and his friend Sala, of course, is a uh, is a happy. Happy, is it... yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Marion is is uh, what is she? She's a grumpy. Grumpy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's a warrior. Yeah. She's him upside the face when he shows up the first time. <laughs> right. With that. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's good. That's good stuff. I love that movie. Um, well, um, any any final thoughts before we wrap it up? Um, as, as a final thought, uh, again, this is a tool to help you to write and direct great movies, and to and really to decide why. A character should be a certain guy. Yeah, motivated. I mean, to write the science fiction, you're going to need a doc. <laughs> um, if you're writing a rom com, you're going to need a happy. And a sneezy. Yeah, happy and a sneezy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. That's that. When Harry met Sam. Yeah. It's a, it's a sneezy, melancholy type guy. And a happy. So certain formulas. Um, when you just don't select characters just to be interesting or to have one of each. Yeah. Uh, another thing to be aware of, and the reason that it's important to study this at all, is I found through my career, because uh, I meet uh, young writers and filmmakers when they're in their formative stage, is they're not aware. One of the things I find in helping to develop writers and filmmakers is that they often write characters thinking that they're different, but they're just writing themselves. Yeah. Um, you have to study these other characters and actually become these other cats to write about them. Yeah. Or to act them. Or to even direct them. Yeah. Well, the thing about directing is if you know the character you've written that I've I use it in directing also, like not just writing. Of course, many times I've also written the script, so I know what the character is uh, setting out. But I can I, it's just uh, you use the character reacting to a certain thing as a um, direction. OK, so he's, uh, you know, uh, you, you just use you know, there's catchphrases, there's buzzwords. It, it hel helps you like narrow down what uh, what the direction should be because you know what the character should do. And even if you're directing somebody who doesn't know the characters, very often you don't. I like again, I have not shared this with anyone. I've just used it as a tool inside my own head for for years. Um, and so I've been able to like coach people through a certain thing even when even when talking to writers who are writing something for us um ex the way you explain it just helps it it helps it just gives you an extra um i don't know tool like you said to explain yeah. things to people as well um also, and they think oh you understand you've got such interesting ca yeah and casting you have such interesting characters uh blah 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 how do you do it no 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 just pay attention to human beings for the for most of my life you know it's not it's not uh, yeah i don't know i, I mean, sort of shrugged it, it off i don't know yeah just pay yeah attention. i mean well it helps because um you don't want to cast someone who's the opposite of the character they're supposed to play you want 
you know, if the character they're going to play is introverted, like a bashful or a melancholy, or, you know, then you want them to be one of those two so that it's not that much of a stretch. Um, trying to get a sleepy to be a bashful is uh, very difficult. <laughs> you know, someone with the high self esteem, you're trying to get them to play low self esteem or vice versa, is uh, very hard to direct the and get close to who the character is in the script. Yeah, yeah. Let me also say this. This is a trick. Characters can play the characters that they lie as. Uh, and, uh, for example, a bashful can play a happy. Yeah. They do that all the time. A bashful, I mean, happy can play a best. Yeah. It's natural for them to yeah. a doc can play a joker excellently. Because that's how they hide. Yeah. They're used that's to what they, they're used to feeling that way. They know uh, what it feels like. Yeah. A superstar can play a grumpy. You cannot <laughs> meet a superstar that doesn't play grumpy. They do that every day. Yeah. That's our conversation uh, about the the seven personality characters. What did you call it, Cooge? Definitive player examples. Yeah. So uh, that's the definitive players in movies. We personality hope types. personality types. Yeah, we, personality types. We hope that helps explain the stuff we went through in the last episode of of not movieisms. That's the other show, uh, Film Reverie. And uh, we hope that if you can, you know, like read through it, maybe listen to us talk about it a little bit. But really, what will really help it sink in is maybe go watch some movies and try to figure it out. And you might be right, you might be wrong, but it'll start to help you narrow down what it is. And maybe figuring out what you you are can help you figure out, oh, well, I know how to write that because I've felt that before. But um, understanding other people also will help you write those other characters that you're not like people that have a completely opposite worldview of me. Um, I've sat down and written before because I understand them and I love the other characters for what they are. Um, that is basically different from me. Um, I still don't like, uh, Brad. So, um, (laughs) I'm working on that. I'm going to write a Brad character one day when I can finally figure out how to, how to appreciate him. (laughs) Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, right. I think uh, if anyone's listened to more than two episodes, they they know immediately that I'm the melancholy and Mike's the happy. It's <laughs> very easy to tell. Um, Happies aren't usually as cruel as Mike is. Yeah. Um, I just gave him permission to be cruel because we think it's funny. It's <laughs> just years. It's just years of frustration, Brad. Yeah, let it all out on me. <laughs> so um, we're actually going to we're actually going to take a couple weeks off for the holidays. Uh, we got Christmas and yes. uh, uh, New Year's, so we're probably not going to have any new shows out for the next couple of weeks. But we'll be back with uh, uh, some interviews and some more of our uh, how we made a movie curriculum, the filmmaker's journey that we've been calling it. Uh, and we will uh, see you then. Have a happy holidays and uh, a happy new year. Cool. Did you got any final uh, thoughts? How how do people? Where are people finding you? Facebook. Facebook. Right yeah, now. Facebook. Kujitele Um, uh, he's he's really put some thought into a lot of this stuff, and uh, uh, it's good. He his uh, Facebook posts about all kinds of things. So, uh, you never just yeah, get. Yeah. By the way, I just realized that I forgot to put. Uh, a link to Cooj in our post. So I'm going to get on that while we're on vacation. I'm going to fix yeah. it all to where yeah. you can uh, find Cooj yeah. on the post for the episodes yeah. he's on. Yeah. You'll never just get a repost from Cooj. It comes with a lesson before you can read the post. Uh, there's always like a, a there's like a, at least three points on what you need to be thinking about when you watch the watch or read the post he's shared for you. Yeah, there's always like a little lesson, life lesson in there. Um, if you want to contact us, we are uh, Film Reverie Podcast at gmail.com. I'm Becca Meyer, of course. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook that way. Brad is Balding Ewok. And uh, 
that's it. That's it for this time. We hope this this uh, character stuff really helps you out. We love talking about it. We could obviously go on for hours and hours and hours. Um, we have gone on for hours and hours and hours. Uh, this is just scratching the surface. Uh, so we hope it helps. And uh, that's it for this time. Uh, until we see you again, go make something and uh, have, the a good end. have a good holiday. That's a wrap. <laughs> we and, all got our catchphrase. And isn't? cut. <laughs> <laughs>